In the visual arts, to appropriate just means to adopt or borrow or recycle similar aspects of other pieces of man-made visual culture. So it's all about revision and reevaluation. And inherent in this idea of appropriation is the idea that this new work is going to recontextualize whatever it's borrowing from to create the new piece. And in most cases, the original idea or the thing that is appropriated remains accessible as the original without change so that it, this can be identified as a piece of appropriation artwork. An appropriation of visual culture and art and music, literature, everything, has such a huge history um, in human civilization, and particularly in art where students and established artists develop their methods by borrowing and copying from other artists or, like I said, recontextualizing images. So appropriation can be seen essentially as just the way in which humans progress and learn. And here we're looking at a classic example of that from Andy Warhol's Campbell's Soup Collection, where he's taken an ordinary everyday object, like the label on a Campbell soup can, and recontextualize it into an artistic setting. So sort of asking the question, well, why can't we look at something like a simple soup label and think of that as being art, just like we look at, you know, these massive paintings and, and think of these as impressive pieces of artwork as well. And this next particular painting by Markel Duchamp I actually got from University of Nottingham has a great YouTube channel called Words of the World, and they did um, an episode on the word avant-garde. And this was an example they used, and this is also a great example of appropriation artwork. You've got the Mona Lisa with a little uh, mustache and beard drawn on, and the title of the painting is a pun. When these letters are pronounced individually in French, you get L-H-E-E-Q, L-H-E-E-Q, loosely translates to, she has a nice ass. Or if you want to be a little bit more slangy and a little less appropriate, um, that, you know, she wants it. And this is another great example of how we're recontextualizing art, in a way kind of um, de-apothesizing the Mona Lisa and questioning uh, really what, what is it about this piece that makes it so magnificent and so much superior to, uh, to some of the other types of things that we see in the art world. And the appropriation art movement and the avant-garde movement gave rise to other artistic movements as well. And this next painting we're looking at here is the classic example of synthetic cubism. And cubism, of course, was a movement that was pioneered primarily by Pablo Picasso. And what makes this synthetic cubism is that it's not only oil painting, it's also a, a collage of different materials. And the key in synthetic cubism is, is just that, to, to merge different subject matters. And it was the beginning of collage materials as being introduced into an important ingredient of fine artwork. And that led to another movement in art, known as the ready-made or the found art movement. And this, once again, was pioneered by, pioneered by uh, excuse me, Markel Ducamp. And this is his piece known as The Fountain, and it's quite simply just a modified urinal <laughs> that, once again, he's recontextualized into an artistic setting. And in ready-made or found art, um, like, like The Fountain here by Ducamp, the key is to, to take objects that aren't normally considered art uh, because they already have a non-art function, but then kind of creatively display them in an artistic context. And then this idea of uh, a ready-made or found art then gave rise to another movement known as Dada, or Dadaism. And this movement was fairly it's fairly difficult to describe. It wasn't, it wasn't just an artistic movement, it was also a cultural movement um, that was very anti-war, um, it was anti-bourgeois, it was anarchistic actually in, in nature too, and its purpose primarily was just to, to kind of ridicule what its participants deemed the meaninglessness of the modern world, and this was around World War II, and a lot of people were upset about that. And it continued with the appropriation of everyday objects, but unlike the ready-made or found art of Ducamp, it didn't attempt to elevate the low, um, like a toilet urinal, to a higher art status, but rather it just sort of produced art um, in which chance and randomness formed the basis of creation. And here's kind of the classic example of that, um, a collage by Hannah Hoek called Cut with the Dada Kitchen Knife Through the Last Weimar Beer Belly Cultural Epoch in Germany. And then this, <laughs> the Tada movement, and we're getting a little crazy here, um, gave rise to what was called the, like the pop art movement. 
and this is a collage of different magazine articles, um, and this is from Richard Hamilton. It's entitled, Just What Is It That Makes Today's Homes So Different, So Appealing? And really, all, all these pieces of artwork probably deserve a much more um, in-depth kind of analysis, but I just want to kind of give you a quick survey of appropriation artwork and what that means. Here's another great example of appropriation, or uh, pop art, rather, um, and this is entitled Drowning Girl. It's by Roy Lichtenstein. He actually had a uh, exhibit at the Dennis Museum in Traverse City, which is where I live uh, a few years ago, I think, which was cool to see. Anyway, now let's move on back to Yasumasa Morimura. Oh, actually, wait, never mind. Before we get to that, there's one more thing. Um, even political campaigns can be thought of as art in the appropriation art movement. So once again, something that we normally think of outside of the artistic realm, like um, a political advertisement, can be thought of artistically as well. So you, this was a very popular image, obviously, during election time, and it can also be uh, thought of as an example of appropriation art. Okay, now, Yasumasa Morimura. So I'm just going to give you some examples of um, his big claim to fame is painting himself into famous paintings or portraits. So here's a portrait of Marilyn Monroe, and here's his version of it. And then here we see one of my favorite paintings in the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. This is Olympia by Edouard Manet. And here's Morimura's version. <laughs> and this is Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer, a Dutch artist. And there's Morimura's version. And then one last one here. This one's a little bit more difficult to see, but this is the anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicolas Tulp by Rembrandt. And there's Morimura's version. So appropriation art covers a huge span of time and really encompasses a lot of different art movements, but it's got a lot of cool stuff. So feel free to, to check out any of the paintings that we've talked about in this video and, and learn more about them because they're all really great. Thanks for listening. See you next week.